Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so thank you for coming over uh, to the talk. And I'm very excited to introduce Mr. Kyung-un Kim here. Um, he's a fourth year uh, PhD student at KAIST, South Korea, working on um, energy efficient hardware architectures, network on chip, and, and the silicon implementation. Uh, today, he's going to talk about his um, low energy augmented reality chip and its application to AR um, glass prototype. All right, please. Thank you, Jiyoung. Uh, today, I'm going to present you a real-time augmented reality processor for a smart glasses system. So this is the outline of my presentation. First, I will start with the introduction of augmented reality. In the introduction, speed and energy constraints for glasses system will be explained. Next, the target algorithm, Buckley's augmented reality, will be explained in the next section. And then chip implementation will be presented with two key features. They are taskable pipeline many SIMD architecture and uh, a neural network based scheduler for two dimensional mesh network on chip. After that, I will show you the chip implementation result and its system implementation and then conclude my talk. First, introduction. Before defining AR, I want to explain you a recent mobile system paradigm. There is a certain relationship between a user and a mobile system, mobile device, and, real, and the real world. A user controls the device and gets experience through UI UX by, analyz by analyzing information given through the sensor. In this relationship, we want to minimize the control while maximizing the experience. To minimize the control, we need an intelligent device by removing inconvenient controls. Also, it has to support seamless, natural, visual, and responsive interactions to maximize the experience. For this reason, augmented reality is proposed to realize this new paradigm. AR is widely used in a variety of applications. The potential applications are entertainment and uh, next generation UI UX and a combination with location-based services. Netherlands company XPRX Mobile categorized AR technologies into four four levels according to their computation complexities. Level zero is hyper, hyperlinking. Hyperlinking is not actually AR, but it was a trigger for AR technologies. When we take a picture of the QR code in the paper, on the paper, uh, the corresponding website pops up. Level one is marker-based AR. Recognizing the marker on the paper, a 3D object is displayed. 3D CAD tools such as SOLIDWORKS support this kind of AR. Uh, for example, a designer, a house designer, can show his uh, virtual house design uh, everywhere with a smartphone and a printed marker. However, markers limit the AR's application. Nevertheless, most of mobile services support only level one AR yet. Level two is markerless AR. Recognition without markers makes AR algorithm more computationally heavy, but markerless AR can be applied to a variety of applications. For this reason, markerless AR is actively studied uh, in the recent computer vision research, but rarely implemented 
uh, in the mobile systems. Lastly, level three is augmented vision. Augmented vision is a completely wearable AR system. Since its form factor is very small, like islands, um, while it has to support level two AR algorithm, level three, level, level three AR is still on that uh, near future technology. I realized level two Macaulay's AR uh, for the smart glass platforms. This page briefly explains the concept of Macaulay's AR algorithm that I implemented. AR is an augmentation of real world and the virtual world. Seemingly, Macaulay's AR is composed of two steps. First, the target object should be recognized, and then its 3D model is fetched and displayed on the device. So a 3D car animation is displayed on the figure of the book to realize vivid and realistic book reading. Now we can see Porsche Cayman on all sides instead of a 2D image. However, there are some hardware requirements when implementing AR in an head-mounted display systems. First thing is high throughput. Mm, I, in the previous slide, I already explained that, that AR consists of two stages, which are recognition and visualization. In the past, micro-based AR was actively investigated and uh, a marker on the object makes recognition task so trivial. However, since attaching markers on all objects are, is an impossible solution, recently the marker list AR is the mainstream in the computer vision research. In marker list AR, for the general, general object recognition, we have to rely on natural feature extraction uh, uh, algorithm, which requires more than 10 times higher computation compared to the macro-based AR. So it is almost impossible to realize it with real-time operation on the current mobile system. This page explains the speed, speed limit of the modern application processor when implementing AR. In, in this second reference, uh, using Snapdragon S4, scale invariant feature transform or shift is implemented, which is one of the most widely used feature extraction algorithm. Despite the, the input image resolution is quite low uh, and without, uh, without processing data-based matching, uh, the overall throughput is only six frames per second. According to this reference, the, the reported performance is optimized with mobile GPU, and OpenCL library. Because feature extraction is a, only, a, only a part of recognition-based AR, the full chain of AR cannot be implemented with the modern APs like Snapdragon S4. To remove software optimization issue in the previous slide, I assumed an ideal implementation uh, result in this page. In the assumption, quad-core processor of 1.2 gigahertz is employed, and each core has a 128-bit neon processor. In this assumption, uh, all of four neons are, are assumed to have 100% utilization. Since neon can process simultaneously eight integer operation at a time, uh, its peak performance becomes 38.4 giga operation per second, or GOPS. Uh, when the recent vision processors with hundreds of GOPS are, are taken into consideration, its peak performance is quite low, even with 100% SIM utilization. 
Also, the image resolution is an important factor as well. Processing in low resolution degrades the recognition rate as shown in the left graph. It is a study of recognition rate by uh, the size of the size of target object. So high resolution is required for the high recognition, but it causes tight uh, hardware design constraints such as uh, throughput and on-chip, off-chip bandwidth. The second requirement for implementing AR in, a, in an HMD system is low energy. Compared to the previous mobile system, PDA and smartphone, HMD has a smaller better size, the red line. Uh, however, HMD requires more computation power to support complicated Macaulay's AR functionalities. Therefore, there exists a huge energy gap between the power supply and power demand. Therefore, uh, we need to fill this gap with the uh, hardware energy efficient hardware implementation. To make my point clear, I, me I measured the speed and the power consumption of OME4, which was integrated in the recent smart glass product. I used OME4 uh, multimedia panda board uh, instead of the, the smart glasses for, for the convenience. Here is a specification of OME4. It operates at 1.2 gigahertz, and uh, it contains ARM Cortex-A9. Okay. I tested these four algorithms, which composes AR. As you can see here, the frame rates are, are very low, far below 30 frames per second of real-time operation. And the power consumption is also quite high considering the glass's small battery size. Therefore, high speed and low energy requirements, or for the high speed and low energy requirements, uh, high throughput and low energy hardware implementation, which is dedicated to, dedicated to level two Macaulay's AR is required. This slide summarizes my contribution. First, a real-time AR processor uh, chip is designed. It features cascable pipeline SIM cluster and congestion-aware network on chip scheduler. This is for uh, high throughput implementation, and this is for the low energy consumption. Its peak performance is 1.22 tops, and it consumes 381 milliwatts on average. Also, uh, this chip's evaluation board is designed and it is integrated inside the, the prototype, smart glass, prototype of smart glass. Its name is K-Glass and it has 800 by 600 micro display and it can sustain four hour AR operation. Here is a short demonstration video of K-Glass. This is wearing image of K-Glass. First, we tested, we tested it in the bookstore in Kaist. Here is the micro display output. It can recognize each magazine on the shelves, and when we pack, when we pick up a car magazine, the Porsche Cayman is detected, and the 3D model is displayed on the left side, and additional informations are on the right side. You can see the other side of the car by rotating the magazine. and detailed information of the chip is shown here. This is power consumption and frame rate. And, okay. 
The second place is a toy store. Uh, virtually visualized toy figures are, uh, first we recognize the, the front of the boxes and virtually visualized uh, 3D toy figure is shown. So we can see the assembled toy figure without actual assembling. <clears throat> Sorry. There are some jittering uh, com and comes from the camera pose estimation error and some kind of algorithm optimization is required. Okay, from now on, attention-based Markowitz AR will be explained in, in this section. We divide the Markowitz AR process into four stages, which are visual attention stage and key point distraction stage and object matching and post calculation stage, and last, visual rendering stage. First, we select reasonable interest from the input image uh, to reduce the workload reduction, workload processing workload for the further stages. And then, key point vectors are extracted only from the selected ROIs. The extracted key points are utilized here. Uh, first, uh, object matching uh, utilizes the, the extracted key points to select the object in the database. And uh, post calculation stage is to calculate the pose of the, the front camera in the HMD. Finally, the rendering image is displayed on the device. A lot of vision processors have adopted RI selection as a pre-processing. Uh, RI selection, which is also called visual attention, selects only a meaningful reason from the input image to reduce the, the processing workload from the, of the following stages. The smallest unit of the ROI, the region of interest, is a small rectangular image tile, usually between 8 by 8 pixels and 32 by 32 pixels. Tile processing enables a smaller on-chip memory uh, because it, the chip does not have to store all of the, uh, the, the whole input image. And also, independent tile processing can be uh, implemented with the help of parallelized hardware. So we can speed up the overall AR processing. This page shows the uh, effectiveness of visual attention combined with feature extraction algorithm. The number of features extracted, the number of extracted features are reduced from 700 to 100. Uh, however, the, the, only, the features from the backgrounds are removed so the overall object recognition accuracy does not degrade it. However, conventional spatial domain visual attentions uh, require heavy computations. For example, in Laurent ET's uh, visual salience map, it generates seven image pyramids, uh, which requires a lot of on-chip SRAM and time, cons time consumption. Uh, and the center surround operation is performed to get the finer uh, feature map. Uh, and, and find feature map and feature maps are, are integrated uh, to generate the, the salience map. Due to its heavy computations, it spends too much time and degrades overall throughput. As a pre-processing, visual attention must not consume a lot, of a lot of time. To reduce the amount of computation, visual attention algorithm in frequency domain is proposed. Its name is phase spectrum of quaternion Fourier transform, or PQFT. It generates only four channels of, of, of image, but it does not need Pyramid, image pyramids. 
instead, uh, the four channels are Fourier transformed into the frequency domain, and only the region of interest whose phase whose phase differences are large are selected. This page shows the time reduction of frequency domain in a frequency domain visual attention. Two visual attention algorithms are implemented in the PC environment, and uh, the, the special domain visual attention spends 0.4 seconds, and the feature detection time is reduced by half. As a result, only six a point, a 0 0.6 second is saved, uh, which is not large as a pre-processing. On the other hand, uh, special uh, frequency domain visual attention spends 0 0.08 second uh, with the similar attention gain. So in, in terms of throughput, frequency domain visual attention is more appropriate for the uh, high throughput applications. Another simple technique is used to increase throughput. Previously, observed recognition and comet tracking utilizes different kinds of feature detection algorithms. As an example, observed recognition utilizes shift, and uh, the comet tracking utilized uh, fast algorithm. However, feature detection algorithm consumes a lot of time as shown in this uh, graph. So simple algorithm modification enables the feature extraction algorithm sharing, and uh, it increases throughput a lot. So with the help of visual attention in frequency domain and feature extraction sharing, uh, the processing time is reduced by 78%. And the overall throughput is, uh, becomes 4.5 frames per second. However, the, the performance with software optimization is not enough for the real-time operation. So additional speed up is needed to achieve uh, 30 frames per second performance. To accelerate AR um, more to the real-time operation, I designed a dedicated chip named BONAR. BONAR is an abbreviation of basic on-chip network for augmented reality. It is developed to accelerate uh, the Markowitz AR algorithm that I explained so far. Previously, various kinds of visual, uh, vision processors were developed to accelerate computer vision algorithms mostly related to object recognition here. And uh, their peak performances are hundreds of gobs and consume less than one watt, except the uh, Toshiba's chip. And several techniques of hardware and algorithm were employed to enable real-time object recognition, but their performances are not enough to process Macaulay's AR in real time. In this page, uh, overall architecture of the proposed AR processor is shown. There are 32 processors in the chip, and they are connected with two-dimensional mesh network. First, visual attention processor, or VAP, is responsible for the feedforward visual attention. And scale space processor, or SSP, and KDP and DGP are responsible for the feature extraction. And key point matching accelerator, or KMA, uh, selects the target object in the database. And pose estimation processor, or PEP, calculates the pose of the camera. And finally, uh, the rent the rasterization, rasterization processor, or RP, is responsible for 3D image rendering. Although this processor executes uh, the full chain of AR, of Markowitz uh, augmentability, 
I'm going to focus on the, the first, two, first two steps because they include uh, the most of uh, computation and network issues. From now on, the proposed hardware will be explained in detail. To excite they are data level parallelism, or DLP, and task level parallelism, or TLP, are exploited. The AR process has both of high DLP and TLP. Every image tile is processed with the same series of the operation, which corresponds to uh, DLP. So for the DLP acceleration, we can use vector parallelization, vector, uh, parallelization due to its data independence. On the other hand, for the TLP, uh, each process consists of uh, several tasks, and they have dependencies between them. In this case, pipeline technique is employed, can be applied to accelerate uh, AR process. Now we have two kinds of parisms to be accelerated. First, DLP is about the acceleration inside the stage. Heterogeneous many seamed PEs are, are employed to accelerate each stage's DLP. There are six types of uh, heterogeneous seamed cores, and their, their functional units are dedicated to the, the corresponding stage's function. And the number of cores are determined by the degree of uh, data level parallelism of each stage. For the TLP, task level pipeline is, uh, is employed over the whole AR process. Same clusters are tightly pipelined with high core utilization by running them simultaneously. However, pipeline sim architecture causes a simultaneous and massive data transactions uh, between clusters. Because the task level pipeline incurs the produce, task producer and task consumer relationship. Therefore, network congestion problem arises again, uh, arises, and an intelligent routing rule is required. In the figure, heavy data transactions are, are marked with red arrow. And these two transactions are the largest data transaction. First, I did some numerical analysis on the network in my chip. To detect key points, we stacked a Gaussian pyramid, and it accounts for the largest portion of the, the data transaction. Usually, its size is uh, 10 times larger than the, the original input image size. Second portion is key point descriptor. Suppose that we have 2,000 key points in the current frame, then uh, 256 kilobytes of descriptors should be generated and then transferred to the, to the other clusters. As a result, 1.28 gigabyte per second uh, internal bandwidth is required on average with 80% processing time margin to, to, uh, to, sorry, to process uh, AR in real time. In fact, the amount of internal data depends on the complexity of input images. Here are two examples. The first uh, low background clutter image has only 70 reasonable interests and 700 feature vectors. On the other hand, the high background clutter image has uh, more than twice processing workload compared to the previous one. This kind of workload variation has direct impact on the direct effect on the network congestion, and, and it exists 
even in the consecutive frames in the video frame, in the video stream. So this graph shows the actual data transaction inside the chip measured with the rear, rear video stream. Its average value is 1.28 gigabytes, but sometimes it rises dramatically over the network capability. Bonayar's network capability is calculated by multiplying uh, NOC frequency, bitwidth, data frequency, and bisection bandwidth. Its value is the its value is 1.32 gigabyte per second, which covers the average uh, required bandwidth, but cannot deal with these kinds of network overflow. With uh, Based on our pre-design analysis, the required bandwidth utilization uh, temporarily exceeds, exceeds the network capabilities. Since this network overflow incurs network congestion, uh, making real-time operation uh, impossible, so we have to handle this network overflow. To eliminate network congestion, we need to know the reason of the, the congestions. As an example, let's take a look at these two uh, clusters. Key point detection cluster, or KDC, transfers the detected key points to the, the descriptor generation cluster, or DGC. In this case, this cluster, KDC, is task producer. And, and the DGC is a task consumer. As shown here in the left figure, uh, three task producers created uh, the tasks, and the number of tasks are two, one, and one. And we have four valid consumers uh, as shown here. Normally, the task assignments are, are are carried out with greedy task assignments, that the congestions cannot be avoided. Even though the, the 2D mesh network provide multiple data paths. So uh, with the greedy task assignment, network congestion does not disappear completely. Since network congestion depends on the routing path, we propose a neural network scheduler, or LNS, for an intelligent routing, uh, to intelligent routing method. In an LNS, in the LNS, neural network uh, predicts the workload of future, of future workload, and core mapping scheduler determines the routing path with, with the help of the workload prediction. The neural, the neural network. Okay, the neural, neural network will be explained uh, in the next slide. So let's get back to the previous example. To eliminate network congestion, P6 should be con should be routed to C9 instead of C6. It has a longer data path, but there's no con there's no network congestion. Therefore, we need to predict accurately whether the producers create tasks and how many tasks will be created, created to do congestion-aware routing. And to do, to do the prediction, a neural network is, is designed. It has a 16-dimension input and 32 hidden nodes are, are, are in, the, in the neural network. With the, with the workload history input, it runs with the time series learning. So it, its input is a workload history, and the output is the next workload of the producer. So here is the recognition result of your network scheduler. 
So thanks to the workload prediction of neural network, core mapping scheduler uh, can do congestion minimum task assignment in contrast with first come, first serve uh, assignment method. When producer core, PM, finishes the task and sends, sends migration request to NNS, and then it gives the assigned consumer's ID, in this case CN, and the data are transferred to consumer's core's uh, local memory. The producer and consumer mapping is carried out during the producer's task processing um, to have minimum network congestion uh, and to hide the timing overhead of prediction. The prediction, the prediction, the, the mapping results are stored in, the, in this table. And this slide shows the overall network regulation, regulation flow. With prediction results from the neural network scheduler, pre-assignment is performed to minimize network congestion. When task producers finishes their task, a migration request is transferred to the post scheduler. And this is where we compensate for the error of neural network prediction. Then uh, the real task assignment results are mapped into the table and task migration is performed. This slide shows the result of NNS. A 2D mesh NOC with conventional greedy task assignment cannot avoid inherent network congestion uh, due to the limited number of routing paths. To satisfy real-time constraint uh, of every frame interval, it spreads the NOC traffic across all of the available NOC links when peak bandwidth utilization is, inquired, is in, in, sorry, encountered. Here, the, the peak network congestions are spread to the available uh, network links. So with the help of the neural network scheduler, 24.4% network congestion is reduced. Now, I will show you the chip implementation results. The proposed chip is uh, fabricated with 65 nanometer CMOS technology, and it occupies 4 millimeter by 8 millimeter uh, size. The proposed chip um, consumes 381 milliwatts on average and 778 milliwatts as a peak power consumption. Its peak performance is 1.22 tops, and 1.55 tops per watt energy efficiency is achieved for uh, HD videos clip. Compared to the previous vision processors, uh, it adopted tightly pipelined SIM clusters and 2D mesh network on chip topology with intelligent bandwidth, re bandwidth regulation. With these schemes, uh, the application uh, can be changed to augmentability, which has more, which requires more computation and power consumption. This slide summarizes the performance achievement of this processor. Compared to previous vision processor, uh, 3.58 times higher peak performance is achieved, and it obtains the highest energy efficiency of 1.57 tops per watt and 12.7 milliwatt millijoule per frame. Also, uh, it, it is tested, it is measured with the full HD, uh, no, it is measured with HD video. Since the proposed processor is a prototype chip implemented under the academic uh, project, 65 nanometer 
process technology has chosen uh, considering the FAP availability. To e examine the potential power reduction with uh, the state-of-the-art fabrication process, we estimate the power reduction uh, by the process scaling. Uh, more than half of powers can be saved with 28 nanometer fabrication process, and it can contribute to the longer uh, AI processing time. I used these four um, references to, to, to calculate the process scaling. And this slide shows, uh, shows the resolution scaling. My chip is target, my chip's target is HD resolution, but uh, many of computer vision algorithms are targeted for the VGA or QVGA. So uh, <clears throat> for the fair comparison, I compute, I compute the, the resolution scaling. So for the VGA resolution, it requires 127 milliwatts, and, it, and the chip will occupy 10.7 millimeter scale for, for the VGA processing. This slide shows the, the uh, organization of K-Glass. We have a touchpad here, and, uh, and this is a front camera. And it's a micro display with 800 by 600 resolution. The main board contains the proposed AR processor and host processor for the image, for the video input and output. And PGA is utilized to connect this chip and the host processor. It's uh, because the host processor runs Android, and this is for the the. It works as a mouse, oh, or just touch input device. Yes. For the, okay. Okay. Uh, hardware specification of K Glass and other commercial HMD systems are compared in this page. The battery life is compared when AR application is fully operated. K-Glass achieves uh, about four, four hour with the AR, AR um, application, while other systems sustain less than one hour. This Epson has an extra battery pack with, with the size of smartphone. So uh, we, this here is the, um, here is the algorithm implementation which are related to uh, Markowitz AR. Okay. This is the conclusion of my presentation. An HMD system, is, uh, no sorry, software optimization is performed and the result is. 4.5 frame per second and consumes more, more than one watt. And to achieve 30 frame per second performance and, uh, and achieve low power operation, the hardware optimization is performed. The chip features uh, data and task level parism and neural network scheduler. Lastly, uh, HMD system is mm, carried out, which can sustain four-hour AR operation. Thank you. Right. So, uh, do you guys have any questions? It's open for a question and have more time. Yes. I have a question. Right. The chip that you did, that appeared to build on previous designs, is that correct? 
Yes. Uh, some of components of in my chip are from from this processor, but but there is a new components for augmentability such as camera pose estimation processor. I have to design a new processor for, for that kind of new algorithms. And for those new parts, would that be taking previously existing cores and assembling them in a new fabric, or do you have completely new? Uh, actually, it shares the basic uh, instruction sets, but it has a different sim its extension because each algorithm has different kind of parisms. So it has a different, uh, different SIM extension. OK. Thanks. Thank you. All right. uh, any other questions? Yeah, let's thank the speaker again.